this is Liana with Wet Noses Pet Sitting and we are a pet sitting and dog walking company in Northern Colorado. And as part of our pet care tip series, I am here today with Dr. Gamble with Gamble Pet Clinic. And do you wanna go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself in the clinic? Yes, that would be great. And thank you for having me. Absolutely, this, this is, is so awesome. great. We're, we're excited. So I'm Julie Gamble and I own my own veterinary practice called Gamble Pet Clinic on the corner of Prospect and Timberline here. Um, and we are a small animal dog and cat only practice. Mm -hmm. um, focusing on preventative care. Mm -hmm. So for the series today, what is the one thing that you believe all pet lovers should know? I think that all pet lovers should know that a visit to the veterinary practice does mm -hmm. not have to be full of fear, anxiety, mm -hmm. or stress for either themselves or their pet. Which is great because a lot of animals are scared of going to the vet, you know, yes. and ha that whole experience. And, and that can be one of the blockers to getting them to get the care they need mm -hmm. because if they're upset, nobody wants to upset their pet, sure. nobody wants to have them all stressed out. And then when they actually do get them in here, um, sometimes they're stressed enough we can't do a good physical exam. On Absolutely. Them. Yes, if you can't handle them right. quite a bit, then you right. can't do everything that you exactly. need to do. Um, so what are some of the the things that you recommend or some of the things that you guys try to do? Right, so we um, have went through a certification process to learn techniques to take the pet out of petrified. That's mm -hmm. one of our goals. And <laughs> um, <cute>. yes, <laughs> and it's just a kinder, gentler way to, to work with the patient. Mm -hmm. um, and so we um, do techniques where we talk to our pet parents about what to do at home first before okay. they come here, because mm -hmm. that's really key and important. Absolutely. So things for the kitty cats is getting them used to their cat carrier they yes. should be in a carrier of some sort mm -hmm. um, or on a harness mm -hmm. and they should get used to being in that situation and calm and relax there and then loaded in the car and secured in the car so they're not flopping around because okay. that's stressful and then coming here and so with the kitties what we do is you know get your carrier out leave it out feed them in there, mm -hmm. you know, make them, make it happy, mm -hmm. um, a happy place, put them in there, put them in the car, drive around the block, take them back out so that they don't mm -hmm. only just come to the veterinary practice once a year or yes. every couple of years. And, and, and they're those are a lot of things that people do with their dogs, especially if they get puppies and yes. stuff to get them used to it. But a lot of people don't think to do it for cats. Exactly. But even dogs, we have some dogs that get car sick mm -hmm. um, and then the car's a bad thing. Sure. Or maybe they had their first trip was a long trip from somewhere else mm -hmm. and they got no in there or scared or frightened they were flopping around and and then that's what they think is this car is this big scary thing so even with dogs getting mm -hmm. them used to getting in and making it positive yes using security systems in there we don't always think about that mm -hmm. but if you stop suddenly in your car and your in your dog you know flies forward that, that can be very be scary very scary and can injure them yeah so you know secure seatbelt systems or dog kennels or crates for the mm -hmm. little guys so you know teaching and training get in the car it's a positive thing you mm -hmm. know and then it's positive when you get out and positive when you walk in the vet clinic we recommend that they you bring your favorite treats uh -huh. um, for your cat or dog. Um, bring them hungry. <laughs> that so that good. helps us. Yes. Um, some dogs don't like treats very much or mm -hmm. cats, so bring a favorite toy. Mm -hmm. For kitties, a brush sometimes mm -hmm. works good. We talked my a lot cat, about My cat was like that. Yes. She loved the brush when the she brush. was here. The yes. brush. Um, even so much as we'll get a toothbrush out and do the, the mm -hmm. facial rubbing with the toothbrush. A lot of cats like that. and It's, it's mm -hmm. soft, bristled. So, you know, again, bring that those things. Sense. That helps to relax them put something in the carrier or the car that smells like mom or dad mm -hmm. nice so that again cozy. nice and cozy mm -hmm. the cats again um, feel away which is a, a pheromone uh, works really good as a calming relaxing agent and mm -hmm. for the dogs adaptal does so doing that again at home okay dogs with the before bandanas they come, before they just come when they get here right because okay. sometimes they're scared enough when they get here then we're putting a foreign object on them sure. that they're like well that's scary definitely we still for the kitties when they walk in we'll put a towel that's diffused with the feel away we put that on there and it's been mm -hmm. sitting on there for about 10 15 minutes and then we'll put that over the carrier so okay. they'll get that they'll smell that it helps to relax them mm -hmm. in our examination rooms we have um, in the kitty room the uh, feel away mm -hmm. so it diffuses out in there and it's in the room to help relax them when they walk in the dogs the adaptals in the room already okay so that we help um, to try to relax them that way mm -hmm. we play calming music um, in the rooms based mm -hmm. on is it a dog or a cat okay so you know that can help them we talk about when people transport their transport their kitties and doggies here 
to figure out what music they like in the car. Or, oh, that's a good mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Or maybe they don't like it at all, mm -hmm. you know. So to figure it out, because cats and dogs have some particular... Um, ideas about what they like for for sound and what's normal so things that are typical in your house are going to be yes. the things they're more used what to. what did they grow up and, with yes right yeah. so like we play classical music here but if they've never heard it before mm -hmm. that might be weird it might be weird yeah. maybe they like rap maybe they like rock and roll <laughs> <laughs> you know? and so so finding out how do they react when you're playing that kind of music yeah. do they seem to settle down or do they get anxious yeah absolutely. And, and so choosing that so that That's you have nice point. sounds in the car keeping mm -hmm. the temperature in the car nice and warm so those are all those transport here things sure again bringing them hungry bringing their favorite foods and their favorite you know toys or brushes yeah um, getting them as stress-free as possible coming here mm -hmm. taking a deep breath yourself so you're relaxed <laughs> and then when you come in here you know we do those things in the room too where we get lots of treats and snacks that we can offer mm -hmm. them we use considerate approach where we come up, we don't just grab them yes. and place them on a table. Which you see that surprisingly often. Right. Like, we're, we're, I think I, we're in the, in the, in the mode of, you know, we're, we're busy. Yeah. We've got a lot going on and, you know, just get it done. Yeah. Well, we've tried to change that mm -hmm. to let them come in the room, get acclimated to the room and to us. Mm -hmm. So we're strange beings when we walk in. Yes. And you know, figure themselves out, work with where the patient seems most comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes kitties, you take the carrier top off and you work in the bottom of the carrier. Yes. You don't take them out of it. Mm -hmm. The doggies, sometimes they're best, they sit on the bench. We have some <laughs> nice dogs, <laughs> some nice comfy <laughs> benches. Some of them jump up and they'll sit, they'll stand on the counter. Mm -hmm. I have a 70 pound dog that she likes to be on the counter. Oh, nice and tall. It, nice and tall, yeah. but we let her be there because that's yeah. where she wants to be, you know. <laughs> so working around with what they want to the best okay. of our ability. So wherever they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. and yeah, the right. less that you have to force upon them, the better. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then judging. Does that seem like we're relaxing? They're mm -hmm. okay with what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Do we need to stop and take a break? Or do we need to talk about they're so stressed out their brain can't function right now mm -hmm. and that if we do things, it's just going to frighten them sure. and make it worse. Yeah. And so talking about maybe we need to talk about some pre-visit pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And that can be things even that are um, natural, I guess is a, a crazy word, but we'll use that. So things like there are products that have green tea extract in them, mm -hmm. um, milk uh, protein, case, milk case and protein. Those are um, relaxing products that okay. you can give them. Using medications like trazodone, which is an mm -hmm. anti-anxiety drug. Using gabapentin, which is um, a drug that we use for cats okay. for a relaxation and calming them. So sometimes we'll have to talk about doing those and bringing them back. Okay. Separating out procedures. Maybe we can only do one thing today. Okay, that makes sense. Evaluate how much can we do that's within the realm of what the patient will accept. Sure, during that one visit. Because the next visit we wanna be able to do and we wanna do the next visit after that. And yes. if you force them to have everything done and just get it done, they're gonna be worse the next time. So really looking at like the long-term rather than just that one visit, like what can you do to make future visits better and easier and yes. for the long term. Of for the long animal. term. We're in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. and, that makes sense. And because we want them to get pet care over their lifetime mm -hmm. and not just get it once. And especially as they get older, because they're going to need to be seen more. They're going to have more frequent health problems. And Correct. if you can't deal with some of these fear and anxiety issues when they're younger, they're just going to extrapolate as they get older and have more exactly. issues. Exactly. Right. So. It's going to be harder on them. And we know that fear, anxiety, and stress actually create real medical issues in mm -hmm. the body too. Yes. And so reducing that helps the patient mm -hmm. um, to do better just long term as well. That makes sense. And can people do things like bring their pets in when they're not here for their visits? Yes, we just discussed this the other day with a patient where I um, would like them to come in. They, we call them happy visits and, and they just make sure that we don't have a big full lobby before yep, they come mm -hmm. and pick a time where it's fairly quiet, walk in the door with their pet, bring treats mm -hmm. and you can use ours to walk on the scale if they will. Mm -hmm. See if they're that okay with scary. that. It could scale can be super scary. Yeah. And so will they walk on that and get a treat? Mm -hmm. If they don't fine, then just walk around the lobby, give a treat. Mm -hmm. If an exam room is open and the pet will walk in with them, walk in the exam room, let them walk around, get your treats, mm -hmm. right? Everything positive, positive, positive. So that they come into the clinic and they get some positive reward mm -hmm. without a 
negative happening. That makes sense. So it's and all just happy. Mm, it's happy, and then the next time they'll be happier to come in because they like got that you treats. Call them happy visits. They are happy <laughs> visits. Those are happy visits. We also have something called victory visits. It's a totally different thing. Um, it's kind of the same premise, but with those, they're actually scheduled visits with mm -hmm. a team member that's certified and fear free. Okay. Um, or a doctor, depending on what we need. Mm -hmm. And during those visits, we actually use treats and snacks, but we're working with the patient to get them used to having medical procedures done. Okay, so it's a little bit more involved. It's more involved. More hands-on. More hands-on, more specific and tailored for that patient. Mm -hmm. um, and utilizing, you know, the tools that we have to make their visits get better and better. Okay. And some dogs won't even let us get a stethoscope on them because that's a scary medical device. Mm -hmm. So just working up to the point that we can have a stethoscope in our ears listening to them mm -hmm. may take several visits. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But we've taken patients from the point of you couldn't touch them to the mm -hmm. point that they participated in their own care and we were able to do a full physical, draw blood, give vaccinations mm -hmm. without them trying to fight and get away. Mm -hmm. Which is great. I'm so excited that we're seeing this with dogs and cats now. Yes. You've seen this in care for larger animals and zoo animals and things for years. I mean, this yes. is always what zookeepers have done working with animals. They you were can't at the force an elephant to do anything. Right. Um, they were at the forefront of this mm -hmm. type of movement and a lot of the stuff was taken from what they did mm -hmm. um, and being utilized with us. The hard part is we don't have all day long yes. with that patient. Yes. So or every day. Or every day. every day. So yeah. we really need our clients, the mm -hmm. pet parent, to participate in helping their pet get better. Mm -hmm. And I have seen a tremendous response in those, in those patients that the parents have participated in mm -hmm. doing things outside of the vet practice for them. Absolutely. They've made leaps and bounds in getting so much less stressed and so much better when they come here. That makes sense. Yeah, you can't just practice something once a week or every couple months and expect it to and really have it stick. to really make yeah. a, a, a huge difference. Yeah. But even so, you know, every doing helps, every but. little bit helps. And we've seen even those that, you know, um, maybe your pet is not super anxious. Mm -hmm. They do okay coming in here. But just like all of us, when you go to the doctor, you're still a little bit nervous. Absolutely. So even taking those kiddos and feeding them and touching them in the considerate way that we do mm -hmm. helps them. Mm -hmm. And they do better and better each time they come. Absolutely. It's going to be so helpful. It is. <laughs> it's a wonderful movement. And it's a wonderful thing, not only for the pets and the pet parent, but mm -hmm. for us as team members here mm -hmm. working with the patient. Because the last thing we want to do is cause them stress. Yeah. Absolutely. It could be a much more positive experience for you guys. It is. And it has <laughs> been. It's been revolutionary more. for us, yes, you know, to That's have that amazing. enjoy. I love it. It's so exciting. It, it really is a super exciting movement in the veterinary it industry. Is. It's a, it, it's really it is. It is. And, and it's it's taken on a whole new life, which is great. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we the, our hope is that everyone will practice this type of, of procedures, you know, in their practice, the fear-free procedures, mm -hmm. you know, across the United States and the country. It'll just you know, become an expectation. Just an expectation. Which is amazing. I yes. love it. Yes. Well, wonderful. So thank you so much for joining me. So if yes. people want to find out more about you, how can they reach you? Yes. So we're Gamble Pet Clinic. Um, we are, our phone number is 970-221-9995. You can look at our website, which is gamblepetclinic.com. And then I also want to give a shout out to Fear Free. Um, anyone can sign up for Fear Free Happy Homes, and it's just fearfreehappyhomes.com. Um, the basic membership is free. Oh. They have wonderful resources on how do I prepare my pet to go mm -hmm. to the veterinary practice. If I want to trim toenails, oh, how can I do that in a fear-free way? Yes. How can I groom my pet in mm -hmm. a fear-free way? Um, and tons of other resources that are on there. And oh, it's all wonderful. free. There is a um, another um, membership if you want more, inf you know, sure. further information. But to that the gets you a long way. So oh, you can get through that. And then it's yeah. great. And we use it all the time as uh, references for our clientele to, mm -hmm. to go to that and get information. So. That's wonderful. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This was super fun. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. And I want to get that information out there, and I was, I was yeah. happy to be able to do that with it's you. It's good for people to learn. That's great. <laughs> it's good. Well, Thanks, thank Leon. you guys all. Definitely, you can get links here down in the comments. Um, and so go ahead and follow us, subscribe so you get future videos. And thanks so much for watching. Thank you.